Around a month ago, I got the chance to visit Six Flags Over Texas, located between Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas. Despite the fact that I was only there for about 3 hours, I was still able to get a good sense of the park. This includes riding 11 of the park's 13 roller coasters currently in operation. These exceptions were Judge Joyce Grimm because it was closed my whole visit, and Wiley Coyote's Grand Canyon Blaster since you need kids to ride. Even then, I'm sure I'll be back sooner than later, when Aquaman Power Wave opens in 2022. With all this said, today I will be ranking the top 11 roller coasters at Six Flags Over Texas, based off of my experiences and opinions. Number 11, Mini Mine Train. Although a very short ride, this is a perfect coaster to start kids off on the right track. The ride experience was surprisingly smooth, and if you see in the back row, there's a quick pop of air time over a last hill. Nevertheless, Mini Mine Train is a ton of fun and easily worth a ride. Number 10, Runaway Mine Train. Located just a few feet away from Mini Mine Train, Runaway is the bigger, faster, and better mine train at the park. The layout is very similar to many other mine trains across the world, only this one has a pretty intense finale dropping to a trench. The whole ride experience is a bit jerky, and could possibly leave you bruised, but it's definitely a classic within the park, and if it doesn't have a line, I'll hop right on. Number 9, La Vibora. This is my first bobsled coaster, and I've heard a lot of mixed opinions before going in. After riding it, I could see where they both came from. The feeling of gliding along the track without any rail for your bobsled to follow was a really unique experience. Unfortunately, all the brake runs rattled the bobsled around like crazy, which was a bit painful, but putting that aside, La Vibora was a fun ride, an experience you won't find at many other parks. Number 8, Pandemonium. After riding a fairly odd coaster in Nickelodeon Universe, I had pretty high expectations for this coaster. Not only did it spin a ton, but there are also a couple decent moments of airtime. And although this is only ranked number 8, don't mistake it for a bad ride. This just goes to show how strong a coaster collection Six Flags Over Texas really has. Number 7, Runaway Mountain. I wasn't expecting a lot from this ride, thinking it would be tame yet family oriented. After I got off, I wasn't necessarily surprised, but it was a lot more intense than I thought it would be. You could feel yourself being pushed into your seat during certain moments on your ride, and the helixes were pretty intense. There's also lights and a Yeti statue that I didn't know about prior to my ride. Number 6, The Joker. A lot of people find SNS 40 free spins to be uncomfortable and painful, especially when it over Texas. For me, it's the exact opposite. The ride time isn't the longest, but the whole experience is basically a zipper mixed into a roller coaster. Depending on your weight, you may flip 4 or 5 times, or not at all. I believe I only got a maximum of 3 flips during my one ride, and even though I liked the one at Discovery Kingdom a whole lot better, Joker was still an out of control experience. Number 5, Batman the Ride. Even though this ride model is cloned around the world, it still packs a punch into its short but forceful layout. I grayed out multiple times, which could have been caused by dehydration from the hot Texas sun, but nevertheless it still feels way faster than its recorded top speed. The inversions are also very whippy, and the lift hill gives a great overview of the park. Anyhow, the ride's super enjoyable, and it's always a great time riding one of these. Number 4, Shockwave. Wow, talk about an intense ride. The whole layout is full of positive and negative Gs, most notably the two back-to-back -back circular loops. I nearly blacked out during this moment of the ride, and it really caught me off guard. The rest of the ride is full of painful ejector airtime, slamming you into the lap bar, at least in the back row. The only takeaway I have with Shockwave that puts in number 3 on this list is its boring turnarounds. These do nothing except for letting passengers catch their breath. I would still highly recommend the ride, just not as much as some enthusiasts do. Number 3, Titan. I don't know if it's because I got a bad ride on Goliath at Magic Mountain, but I enjoy Titan way more. If you don't already know, Titan and Goliath are new clones of each other, the only difference being that Titan has extra double helix before the main course. Of course, the drops still do nothing to your body, but I did get about 3 or 4 seconds to flow their air over that airtime hill. Both helixes are also very intense, causing me to gray out, and the overall ride is a fan favorite. Number 2, Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast. After my first ride on this coaster, I was generally shocked. I knew it was going to be a good ride, but I wasn't prepared for how good it actually turned out to be. The initial launch was definitely similar to Superman Escape from Krypton, just a little more forceful. The inverted top half gave some decent hang time, the overbank was fun, and the 200 plus foot vertical spike was easily the highlight of the ride. This gave excellent floater air, before doing the course over again, this time facing forwards. If anyone comes to Six Flags Over Texas, make sure again this unique hyper. Number 1, New Texas Giant. This shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, as New Texas Giant is the star attraction at the park. This was RMT's first take on the hybrid coaster, and for it being a prototype, it's holding up very well. Their time is great like all RMCs, and there aren't any versions, making it great for young enthusiasts. The ending did feel like it slowed down during my ride, and it's my least favorite RMC I've ridden, but it's still a long, well-paced ride, and without a doubt, the best ride at Six Flags Over Texas. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, as we are closer than we've ever been to 600 subscribers. Once again, thank you all, and I'll see you in the front row.